Afternoon, people. It's day two of our uh, extruder build fix thing for the 3D printer, the uh, broken extruder. So we're going to, like I said in the first video, we got to drill those holes. So probably shouldn't have thrown this down, but this one, this is a number 30 drill, and the tab size is a it's a four millimeter by 0.7 millimeter threads. And usually you're supposed to use a 29 drill for 65% thread engagement, but I don't have one, so a 30 is probably gonna do okay. It is just aluminum, so that'll be okay. And then after that, we're gonna have to manually change the drill out and then drill this hole, which I haven't decided what drill we're gonna use, but there's a drill bit around here I can scour and get close. So, yep, I'm gonna load this drill in the drill chuck and then we'll measure it and then we'll go ahead and drill that first hole. Cool, so I got the drill loaded up. We measured on the tool setter, and let's go ahead and run this thing. I'm not gonna spot drill it, but we're gonna run a pretty conservative uh, cut here. And that's it. There's our hole. I had to just cut all the way down the stock. It should be a through hole. Sweet, looks like it. All right, on to the uh, next hole. Okay, I looked for a drill that would fit, but I didn't find one, so we're just going to use the 30 again. I definitely think what happened was they used the 29 to drill the other hole, and they just standardized the 29s um, across the part just to make it easy, because 29 would fit in the hole, but 30 just barely. So, yeah. <laughs> Cool. Alright, next uh, we will work on flipping it over and cutting the backs off. Okay, so this is what I've come up with for our op 2. We need to face all that material off the top. And I sh probably should have actually cut the part right in the middle of the block because we would have had less leverage on the corner of the stock over here. So now what the cutter is going to have to do is cut this and it's going to want to pick the part up this way. And we're only holding it on the jaws on this little area and then this whole back area. So what I have it, how I have it set up is it's sitting in the hard jaws in the back. And we're going to cut towards the hard jaw this way. And basically only cut in this direction and only push against that big fat face on the back. And we'll see how that goes. Pretty slow, 40 inches a minute and then like 15% of the full diameter is the width of cut. So we'll kind of see how that goes. I'm hoping it's definitely going to kind of want to lift the part out here and chatter pretty bad, but I'm hoping when it gets to this, the actual body of it, the finish is not terrible. So um, I guess we'll find out. Okay, so that was uh, more successful than I thought it would have been. with the nub there. It's all good though. The rest of it looks fantastic. Okay, next we're gonna actually clean that nub up. All right, here goes cutting the nub. Not sure how this one's gonna turn out. Uh, not terrible. It's just a little cut from the contour. But the nub looks good, so that's good. 
Okay, last thing we gotta do is drill the actual guide hole that's gonna stick out right there. So we're gonna do a little counter, a little chamfer with the spot drill, and then we'll just drill it with the drill. And I tried to cut this shoulder, like smooth like this one, and I went to hold it in the vise. And I kind of crushed this lip here, because that was all I was holding it, but it's okay, it's still functioning without this shoulder, so we'll just kind of have to not show anyone our mistakes. Okay, here we go. Spot drill and then drill. Hmm, I don't think that's where the hole Pretty sure it's up on that side, not this side. Hey, I have my offset backwards. Better. Cool. Okay, so I got it all finished, all mounted up. Here it is up on the printer. Looks super good. The only <clears throat> issue maybe is the fact that the hole is not exactly uh, where the other one was, but so it pushes it farther up against the actual uh, serrated wheel as opposed to being in the bearing. But that may help long term or it may hurt us long term. I'm not too sure, but I'm gonna run the extruder and see if it actually feeds. And then I'll do a test print and we'll call this this project good for now. Feeding just fine based on that. Bearings turning, that's good. So this may actually work out, which is a good good thing, but like I said, that hole is just slightly too far towards that serrated wheel. But uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna call this project good for now until it fails halfway through a 40 hour print. Okay guys, thanks for watching. Uh, this has been fun. Like I said, probably, probably should just spend the five, ten dollars to buy a replacement plastic one. Or actually on Amazon it looks like there's a lot of aluminum ones that are even anodized so um, obviously that's not very fun so I decided to make my own uh, let's see what's in the works I got a GoPro coming so we're gonna have some better in machine footage currently the in machine footage kind of sucks because I have to hold the camera and obviously it's a DSLR and it's pretty expensive so I don't want to put it in the machine um, so the GoPro is gonna be able to go into the machine so that would make some for some much better cutting footage and uh, yeah, like I said, I'm on track where we're, my current goal is to get 100 subscribers by the end of the year. And currently this last week, we've gotten two more. So if you do the math on that, that's probably 100 by the end of the year. Um, cool. So thanks for watching. And like I said, if you want to see more of this kind of stuff, then uh, please subscribe. Hey, one quick thing before uh, I go. I updated the model and moved that hole over. And then I pushed this, uh, this face over just slightly. Uh, just so it's even more accurate to the uh, finished one. I'm going to post the file up on Thingiverse, so um, if you need this, then that'll be up on Thingiverse under uh, Split141. I believe that's the account. And yeah, if you found this useful, please subscribe. Thanks.